Welcome to the Nagawal Zone and I'm here. A question of balance. Let me read you a comment that a user Petr Mystery said. He left his comment about a month ago on my video called What is an EMI? I'll put the link up. He says, Hi Anam, I have tons of knowledge, mostly from my personal experiences, not just theoretical, yet still striving for balance. So I would appreciate if you would do more videos about topics like those shields for to not be affected by external happenings and keeping my balance. I would be grateful for that. Have a nice day. And I think that I'm not the only one. Many sorcerers have power, abilities and personal experiences, yet lacking balance. So personally, those topics like shields, I see as the most important ones. Great question. Some very interesting uh, linkages there in this comment that personally, I wouldn't link those two principles together. Let's look at some of the linkages here. I have tons of knowledge, mostly from my personal experiences, not just theoretical, yet still striving for balance. The thing with knowledge is that if it is not converted, if it is not alchemized into knowing, then it will create aberrations, aka imbalance, in your in your inner world. There are some universal principles, especially uh, especially mapped out in the Toltec system, which I trust very much, that I use to gauge my own balance. And those are the ones that I will share with you here today. Petra feels that the topic of shields and the topic of balance are intimately linked, or at least they are connected. Yes, they are. I agree with that. However, I personally wouldn't uh, have made those connections in my inner map myself. I wouldn't navigate them as connected, although they are connected. Everything is connected, right? So let's look at that. Let's look at that. Balance is not something you can um, you can arrive, uh, you can aim for. Really, it's very important to understand. You can't sort of attain it. It's not a goal that you can sort of work towards. Balance is a symptom. It's a outcome. It's an effect of a cause. Balance automatically comes about if certain previous things have been put in place. Balance cannot be achieved or experienced as an ongoing experience at least if we don't have, if we haven't crossed the line into controlled folly. Controlled folly itself is a, just, a, just an observation that automatically comes when we have lost our human form. When we lost our human form, we automatically see that nothing really matters. Nothing is more valuable than anything else. Nothing has less value than anything else. Nothing is more or less dangerous than anything else. Nothing is more or less mysterious than anything else. Nothing actually matters. Everything is on an equalized plane. That is controlled folly. Controlled folly then arises out of the need for the warrior to continue to exist in the functional world. How does a warrior now exist in the functional world, deal with other human beings, uh, go to the shop, you know, do this, do that, do the jobs, uh, earn money, whatever else, knowing fully well now, fully well, that nothing actually matters. So what the warrior does is engages in what is beautifully described as controlled folly. Controlled folly is a function, it's a survival mechanism for the warrior. It is not a lovely concept that we sort of... Uh, 
um, <clears throat> you know, uh, aim to put into our lives and learn about it. It's a man, you need it's it's a survival mechanism. It's extremely functional. Controlled folly is pretending that things matter, even if you know that they don't. And that knowing isn't just a kind of a nice knowledge or a nice um, read in some book and agreed with it or watched this video and agreed with it. It's not an agreement. It's a real visceral, visceral experience of reality as it is devoid of our illusions, devoid of your fantasies and romanticized stuff, content in the head, devoid of all of that, looking at reality as it is, looking at energy as it flows in the universe, it's absolutely clear to see that nothing really matters. Now how do I live? I'm going to have to pretend as if certain things matter for me. That takes us to the warrior's training in uncovering and encouraging one's predilections. I did another video on predilections and how to figure out our predilections. Go and check that video out. I won't go into detail in that. Once we know ourselves and our predilections, we can pretend as if they matter and go about our business. Because the warrior's main chief concern is impeccability. Whatever the warrior sets out to do must be at the highest levels of impeccability, right? So if I'm going to pretend that things matter to me, knowing full well that they don't, right? Naturally, being a warrior, I want to do them to the best of my ability, be very, very impeccable with that, impeccably train myself in whatever it is. Maybe I love, I love singing. I, to this day, I've been singing professionally since the age of, age of 18. I've just started two years ago training in one of the most difficult forms of singing, which is the Indian classical singing, Bhartiya Shastriya Sangeet. Extremely difficult. It would put opera singing to shame in its complexity and uh, sheer... Uh, training regimen. But I'm a sucker for that. I love learning. I truly love it. I, I love the challenges that learning brings. I feel, I feel frustrated. I feel dead. I feel paralyzed. I feel repulsive from life if I'm not learning, if I'm not grabbing the tiger by the tails and really, you know, wrestling with it. <laughs> That's my inner predilection already, then enhanced by my decades of warrior training. And I love it. It gives me so much energy. It gives me a reason to get up in the morning and sink my teeth and my fangs into something. Right? So once we engage in an impeccable way of living, impeccably living our existence out, giving it a meaning, knowing full well that nothing really matters. Guess what's going to happen to you? That is going to develop shields in you like you wouldn't believe. You'll become untouchable. In the East, you can Google this. It's a word called sadhana. Sadhana. There is no equivalent word in any Roman language of that. Sadhana. Sadhana means giving your life over to a practice, to a something. That's not religion. It's not um, some academic exercise. It's sadhana. It defines your whole life. Like there are people who have been training in Indian classical music since the age of five. They are 40 years, 50 years on their whole life is based around Indian classical music. That's all they know. That's all they're interested in. That's sadhana. There's not a day goes by when, you know, they don't practice. All their relationships, marriage, kids, everything must revolve around 
that sadhana. That is the kind of shields I'm talking about. So that no matter if earthquakes come, if riots are happening in the streets, you are concerned with your practice, your sadhana. Sadhana isn't really practice. It's way more vast, a vaster concept than that. Okay? So if you do not develop an impeccable way of living, a path with heart will elude you. A path with heart and sadhana are very, very similar, very close concepts. Sadhana is a much more rigorous application of the path with heart. Oh, I like that. I just came up with this. Absolutely true. A sadhana is a functional and a much more rigorous real life application daily. Real life. You, you're sold to it. You've sold your soul to it. Application of a path with heart. <laughs> I love it. That's that's it. See, I don't rehearse these videos. I just take the question and then it comes out. I just sort of think a bit on what I'm, you know, roughly going to speak about some of the points and that's it. Then it comes out. Shields are developed because you are um, you are obsessed with impeccability. The very act of being impeccable will shield you from any uncertainty, confusion. Uh, and there are valid confusions and there are nonsensical indulging. Okay, so it's the nonsensical indulging that drains us of vital energy and makes us unimpeccable, makes us cut corners. I'm not going to, my mind is somewhere else when I'm washing the dishes. So the dish, one of the dishes didn't really get done very properly. One of those spoons still got a little bit of grease on it. Or, uh, you know, because our impeccability really shines in the mundane matters. How did I brush my teeth today? Was my mind off somewhere? Or did I really pay attention to what I'm, what am I doing? How did I shave today? Or whenever. Do you know the mundane Activities is where you will really know who you really are, where you're really at. No matter of knowledge you may have acquired will is impressive in the least to a bona fide warrior. I've said this before in one of my in many of my videos that you know people come to me and claim a lot of things. They really do all the time. Amazing claims and wow. I just never get impressed by them because I look at how are they standing. How are they breathing? Where are their eyes? How's their energy? When they are doing something mundane, like just pick, I look at their phone, the condition of their phone, is their screen cracked? Is it an old model? Just poor donkey, just working like a donkey for this guy, taking that phone for granted. Or do they have a relationship with that phone? That tells you a lot about the impeccability of this person. Is the phone dirty? Do they keep the screen clean? Is it, do you know, is it always out of battery all the time? That's a clear indication that you don't have enough energy in your life. Your phone, life is communicating with you through your phone. Telling you that your batteries are always run down. And I'm not just talking out of my ass here. There's a whole science called feng shui or which originated from Bharat, and in Bharat it is called um, Vastu Shastra. Vastu Shastra. It is the knowledge of your everyday things around you, um, communicating with you about who you really are. Forget all the fancy stuff you think you are up here. Who are you really? What kind of relationship do you have with your underwear, with your clothes? All the mundane stuff tells us who we really are. <laughs> I did another video. Go and check it out. It's a really interesting video where I urged people to consider leaving things better than they found them. Leave things better than you found them. Leave things in your head. Leave your thoughts better than you found them. Leave your body more blessed than you found it. 
leave others more blessed than you find them. Right? Leave nature around you more blessed and enriched than you found it. That's impeccability, my friends. That is a true warrior. Imagine the amount of energy that warrior is gaining. Imagine the shields that warrior has. You see how, where this is going? So shields isn't something you just sort of strap on energetically as it were. It shields again is a result of the way you live. You become untouchable by anything. Brings us to another very important point. Attachments. Attachments will weaken any shields that you have. If you are not able to be the eagle that is flying and can see the land, including the mouse. And if you are that mouse instead, that can see nothing beyond a few feet around it. You ain't got many shields because that eagle is coming down as we speak and it's going to swoop on you. So attachments. You know what creates attachments? We have a ten tendency to be addictive. We have addictive personalities. Our inner world, our consciousness isn't clean. It isn't cleaned up. So it isn't clean. We have addictive personalities. We tend to make a religion out of absolutely fucking anything. Anything. We tend to make a religion out of anything. I am not supposed to eat sugar. Sugar affects my metabolism. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Sugar's now become a bloody enemy. Bacteria. Oh, that's an enemy. Virus has now become your enemy nowadays. Virus. War on virus. War on terror wasn't enough. Now war on virus. Virus wars are going on. Don't touch me. Don't come near me. Ooh, how dare you be happy. We are all so miserable. Virus, virus. Don't make a religion out of anything. Don't make a religion out of your diet. Don't make a religion out of your spouse or your kids or your family. Don't make a, reli don't make a religion out of it because you, as soon as you create a, your petty little religion uh, over anything you are attached attachments will weaken your shields and believe me how many abilities you have and what you can do in as a big old big shot sorcerer and this that and all the rest is not impressive it's not impressive what is impressive is how impeccable are you when you are brushing your teeth. Death is not going to be impressed. Your death is not going to be impressed by what abilities you have and how powerful you are because death doesn't give a damn about how powerful you are. Your death gives a damn about one thing. Do you have enough impeccability to survive its onslaught. That's it. That's where what it boils down to. And a warrior's entire training is kind of, you could say loosely, a preparation for their own death. When that moment comes, when that moment of transition comes, is it going to be a moment of ignorance and unconsciousness and helplessness? Or is it going to be a moment of empowerment, of self-knowledge, of uh, a kind of um, love of life that only the touch of death can make us experience, right? It's a paradox. So thank you, Petra, for that question. I hope it kind of points you in the right direction along those lines. Balance comes when you are able to do away with your attachments and to be able to even look at attachments we have to really become so brutally honest with ourselves cannot be brutally honest with ourselves if we haven't arrived at the place of no pity so you see how everything is connected it's not just separate topics that sort of they're not little blocks lego blocks 
separate. Everything is kind of going like that. Everything is connected in one beautiful flowing kind of way. Uh, so consider the, these ideas practically, coming down to practicals. How can I achieve a balance in my life? The biggest thing I can say to you is look at your little religions. Each one of us has literally thousands of little religions that we use to give ourselves an identity. Look at those things. You'll really have to look at them. You will really have to look at them very deeply. Very deeply. Ideas, questions, concepts that you hold to be unquestionably true, you're going to have to look at them. That is the way towards balance. Question absolutely everything that you hold to be true. Remember, I love what Bruce Lee used to say about his, the martial arts that he sort of invented called Jeet Kune Do. He used to say, having no way as way, having no style as style. In Zen, it's, Zen you, the equivalent in Zen is the gateless gate or the pathless path. You see how, how, what these things kind of point us towards? It's the same thing. You've got to completely open yourself up to questioning at the deepest of levels and see what do you hold to be true that you feel cannot be questioned. That's the thing you question. You start questioning deeply your own little religions that will lead you towards balance because you will start cutting those tubes that are, you know, attached everywhere on your energy, energetic uh, body. You will start chopping those tubes off and that will give you, because each one of those attachments is pulling you in a certain direction. Each one of those tubes, your cherished little religion, that opinion that you have that you don't want to question, that image of yourself that you have you don't want to question, that worldview you don't want to question, all of that is pulling you. It's pulling you like Gulliver. You know when those they, the little men tied him with pegs and you know Gulliver's travels. They're all pulling you. You can't balance. There's no balance because you're kind of always being pulled in all these innumerable directions. How are you going to achieve balance? Because if you give in here, that's out of balance. If you give in here, there's pressure from over there now. If you go back, oh, now there's stress from the front. So you've got to cut everything off and then you arrive at balance, at your natural balance. That is your own true point of balance, your own true center of gravity. You see how that works? Well, let me know in the comments what you think of my thoughts and worthless opinions about this topic and whether it helps you. Let me know. It, it helps me to see whether it helped you or not, right? And um, put in your own two cents, two pennies, two dollars, two um, euros, two pounds, whatever it is in the comments uh, and let's have, a, let's have a discussion. Let me know what you think about this. With that, stay connected, walk in freedom. I'll see you soon, next week, in fact. Bye for now.